Welcome to another edition of the Let's Be Frank show. As you know, these shows are, are done to uh, give people some information on what's going on in our town. I am fighting a cold today, so what I'm going to do is, I normally talk a lot. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over um, as soon as we start. And I'm not going to talk that much. I'm going to let the experts do it. Uh, my guest this evening is uh, Superintendent of Schools Scott Schoonmaker and Director of Curriculum Tracy Wooten. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Frank. Um, it's always great. We usually have Scott on once a year, sometimes twice, to go over what, what's going on at the school. And um, so I'm going to turn it over to you and start it off. What, what's going on? Well, th first of all, thank you, Frank, for having us back. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. We've been quite busy at, um, at all levels in the district. Uh, you've heard of the Common Core, the initiative that's getting quite a bit of attention around the state and around the country, um, some of it pro, some of it uh, not as supportive. And like every other district in the state, we are um, abiding by, following, uh, providing for our teachers the preparation to um, promote endorse and support um, what we're asked to do so it, it's uh, it's changed the way we teach um, it's changed the way students learn um, and and uh, I'm very proud of the way that we have adopted uh, the new skill sets and things that are happening with Common Core okay so um, why don't we talk we talk about Common Core um, usually I know a little bit about a lot of things and not a lot about anything um, Common Core my daughter keeps trying to explain it to me and it's it's over my head so why don't we what basically is common core and the standards we'll let tracy what she does best is work through some of those questions and then we'll exchange ideas common core standards are a set of standards and those are goals or expectations set for students about learning um, it's about the knowledge and skills that we expect them to know at each grade level so that they'll be college and career ready by the time they graduate high school so what's the difference between what we what Common Core is and what we did five years ago? It's they are more rigorous, and, and that's really why they've gotten so much attention from from various groups, both in support of and as Scott mentioned, not so supportive of. Um, they're more rigorous in that they expect students to do much more thinking on their own. So many of our other tests are legacy tests, which were the CMTs and CAPT. They expected students to be able to repeat things that they were taught or learned. In the Common Core, what they do is expect students to be able to construct things through, through the knowledge that they gain and then be able to show those skills and tests that they take. So it's a great deal of, of higher order thinking skills. They expound upon previous knowledge and, and then go beyond and have the ability to um, articulate that knowledge to us and it, it really looks at taking the work of a fifth grader and dropping it down to a third grader so that third grader would be responsible for a number of the skills uh, and the knowledge base that a fifth grader would be exposed to so we, we've raised the bar so it's more like an essay test and not a multiple choice. Correct. Thing. Very it, similar. There's all different types of pieces. Because it's electronically based, it's a digital format. Students have the option to arrange things in various orders. As you said, answer in an essay form. They can choose multiple answers for different questions. That's one of the things that we've been working on because testing will start at the end of March and then go through May. Because I remember as a high school student 100 years ago, I applied to Catholic school and one of the questions on the test was what color is an emerald? And I was like, I'm from New Haven. Right. I grew up in the inner yeah. city. I don't, know, I don't even know what an emerald is. Who cares? Exactly. And what was funny is one of the kids in our class, his father was a jeweler, okay. and he got it wrong. Yeah. What does that tell you? So we're happy with that one. So, um, yeah, Common Core Standards and Initiatives, mm -hmm. which you just brought up it a It really bit. started way back in 2007. Connecticut formally adopted Common Core Standards in 2010. And since then, districts have been really trying to roll it out and implement it as responsibly as we can for students. Now, are all the, all the states, you say, Connecticut, do all the states have this? or is not, it just at, not all states. Um, over 40 states have it, and they either use, most states either use the Smarter Balance Test, which is what Connecticut is part of, we're part of that consortium, or the PARC Test. Um, a few states are Common Core states. They've adopted the Common Core state standards, um, or a version of them, but they've created their own test for them. Okay. So last year, uh, just for, for a little timeline, we started to roll out and um, 
and do the practice testing for the SBAC to expose the kids to a different way of, of assessing. When, when you were in school, when I was in school, it's paper and pencil. As uh, Ms. Wooten uh, mentioned earlier, now they're sitting in front of a computer screen. You know, so they, they have to methodically go through it. The test ad ad adapts to their level of proficiency, so it will either get harder or it will get easier dependent upon their success rate on the test. So it gives a truer read of what they do and do not know. Um, so there's, there's things that you're starting to see. Obviously, you know, a nursing student goes off and takes the NCLEX. And, and it's online and it's timed and, and, it, and it reacts in a similar way. So really, a lot of the things that we're preparing our students for will come back to assist them over time by the time our youngsters graduate 12th grade and move on to post-secondary high school or college plans. So it's more or less on computers. It is. It not is all, do all computers. of the kids in the school have, they don't all have We have computers. labs. You have labs? We, we, are, we are very fortunate in North Brantford to have uh, multiple labs in the district. Uh, some of our schools have upwards of two to three labs. We're able to assess anywhere from 75 to 100 plus students at a time. So we rotate through and we're able to manage that with our current staffing levels and the number of kids who are required to test. Wow. It, there's a lot of work. There's a lot that goes into this. And when you look at uh, all of the stakeholders, the technology, um, has to be up to speed and par to be able to support the software. Uh, we, we, we can't have a day where we go in and, and the system is down. Uh, that throws a monkey wrench in that, uh, you know, you don't want to have to live through. So, uh, you know, it, it, it's gone well. Uh, you know, Bruce Williams, our, our IT director, has done a, a wonderful job uh, getting the district ready. The, the administrators, the, the assistants in the tech team have worked with, with Ms. Wooten to, to really um, lay out a plan that's seamless. Now, do the teachers have obviously? Do the teachers have to, must have to be trained for this? They do. They do. We were very fortunate to participate in the field test last year. I actually just had a meeting yesterday with the school coordinators, um, a representative from each building that tests, which are TVS, the intermediate school and the high school, and they're ready. Because we participated in the field test, this teachers already know where to log on to, how to have their students log on, how to create sessions, and they're really confident that they'll be able to do this seamlessly this year. Now, I'll probably take the town council off, but I, I do that on a regular basis. Um, I thought this, that was my job. <laughs> <laughs> does this cost more money? It, it, it seems it, like, I mean, when did... It does. The, the preparation, uh, the professional training for the teachers. Uh, Ms. Wooten has gone to a number of workshops, and she has her department heads um, and others go out so that they are ready to um, bring the plan forward. The, the um, software packages and other pieces in preparation cost the district money, so there's always a cost associated with change. Well, as did we, we know. always have an IT person at, we, at the we school? Did. We did. We've been fortunate. And for it's the same one person who's now got a lot more work to do if he's got to get all those. You know, that's the, the really the, the good, the bad, and, and sometimes the ugly. With any time you continue to advance with technology, there's the upkeep, uh, the number of smart boards or iPads or other tools that come in to play have to be serviced. They have to be updated. The, the software changes, you know, constantly. Look at your phone. You're constantly updating, you know, programs and, and uh, applications. So, yes, uh, all, to all of the above, it, it, it is more expensive and there's more demands on our resources. It's not as easy as I broke my pencil and I got to go no, to the no. and get it done. Or, <laughs> or just to, to get an excuse to take a walk to go yeah, sharpen your pencil. I, need another piece. I used to have pencils about this big because right. I didn't want to pay attention in the class. Right. Um, how do they develop the standards? I mean, are they developed, are they different for every state? Or are they all the same in, in? No, the Common Core state standards originally were designed so that all states could have similar standards. So that when a student comes out of high school, whether they live in Arkansas or Connecticut, they come out with the same set of skills. So back in 2007, it was a state-led initiative. Um, and they had various representation from different stakeholders. They had teachers, they had college professors, they had um, the state governor's board, some other education officials such as superintendents, um, state education commissioners, and they all worked on it. There are um, various groups that, that really have participated more than others, but overall it is the states that, that first asked for this and, and now that they've received it, we have, uh, as I mentioned, over 40 states participating. 
No, I do read. I, you know, I say I don't know much about much, but I, I do read a little <laughs> bit. And I, I read the negative stuff that, like, some people are coming up with, well, you can't teach literature with the common core thing. It's right. It, there's a, they ask for a balance between fiction and nonfiction so that students can have access to, to great literature as well as some informational texts, things so that they can learn about what, are, what some facts are, things that are currently happening. Um, it's more about a balance. They ask in the elementary schools for there to be a 50-50 balance between fictional and non-fictional. And then at the high school level, they ask for about 75% to 25%. And if you look at the 25%, a normal language arts class is only one-fifth of a child's schedule. So they expect that language arts class to be about literature and to be about some other great works that we want to make sure our students have access to and, and have knowledge about as they move on. They, they make recommendations to us. They're, they're not handcuffing us with a canned curriculum. They're saying these are the skills that the students need to be able to demonstrate and exhibit upon completion of this year. Here's a list of, of artifacts and, and um, resources that you can use. Build your curriculum, design your lessons to support what we will assess through the SBAC. So we, we do have that that freedom, um, as you will, to, to make those decisions. Now, if I'm a parent, uh, well, I am a parent, but if I'm a parent of students in the school, how do I get information on the on this whole program? Because you see on, I mean, I don't like Facebook, but I go on it just to see what's going Absolutely. on in town because I have to pick up things for the paper. And, you know, Facebook, I call it the negative uh, right sense because everything mm. on there is usually negative the spin and you got all the parents screaming and yelling about uh you know and some of it that you can read and then i'll just look it up and and they're wrong right but how do they how did it is there a program that they i don't know if you could see that we, but we, we had sent this to, to all parents and it was the the common core <laughs> state standards a guide simplistic questions and and um you know a quick easy way to to answer some of the questions that, that, that people had. And, you know, there's a lot of spin on this. And, and they'll hear from, from someone or they'll see it in the news and the media. And, and they'll say, oh, my gosh, Common Core, we're destroying public education. And, and look what we're doing. We're not allowing teachers to teach. And we are evaluating them based on an assessment that's not fair, that's, that's set up to um, provide failure for our students. And this is going to take time. Um, let's face it, this came at us quickly. We, we didn't have a lot of preparation. I think in hindsight, if they had rolled it out differently, given us more time, more preparation, and then grade by grade, um, extended it each year over a five-year span, it, it would have been more um, palatable, easy to digest, more simplistic for the districts. It didn't happen that way. So we're really, we're hitting the ground running and, and having to look in the rearview mirror to try to correct some of the mistakes that we're all making as we go through it. But, you know, it, I think the argument, uh, Frank, is that for a long time we've been hearing about gaps in education, in inequity. If you lived in the city, you weren't getting the same education. You didn't have the same quality teachers. There were different standards. There was a lot of social promotion. And, you, you know, this has some teeth in it. The federal government, the state government decided that, you know, with, with this think tank, that we were going to um, expand upon expectations for all learners in every state. So the bar has been raised, and with that happening, there's change. And you know what change does? Change creates fear. And, and there's a lot of fear because there's the unknown. And uh, it's like anything, it's, it's how you communicate, um, how you get the information out there. And I think our motto has been slow and steady. You know, we've been trying to, we've been working on this for years. Uh, this isn't something that happened overnight. And, and uh, I think the calming effect in our district is because we're not, we're not putting that undue pressure on our teachers and our students. It's like, I, I don't even know if it was when I was in school or when my kids were in school, they came out with something called the new math. Right. And everybody was mm -hmm. going crazy. And my father, who had a fourth grade education, was like, what's the new math? You add right. two and two and you get That's four. Right. That's the math. What's right. new about it? Right. But that was like driving people nuts. They were ready right. to, um, but, but we're doing things to, to make it as smooth as possible. Right. Um, obviously for the kids and I mean do the kids even know what's going on do they know they, they don't walk in and, and we don't say okay today is an SBAC day and we're gonna drill Common Core into you over and over and over again um, I, I think they're they're sensing that 
this is more rigorous, as Ms. Wooten said, and there's greater challenges and we're asked to do more. Um, but they also understand that it's, you know, it's for the good of all and, and there's uh, an end result here with hard work, preparation, and, and our students really being challenged and challenging themselves. I think it's important to realize that, that as Mr. Schoolmaker said, it was really about telling our teachers what the expectations were and then finding ways to support them. And once our teachers started to begin to feel comfortable and, and realize how exciting this could be for them and for the students, then they were able to relate that to the students and the students are now feeling more comfortable. I think that when we first started really changing things as, as even just as simple as the digital testing, it was scary for kids as, as it was for teachers. So it was our job to make them feel comfortable. Last year we did send the pamphlet out and we also held two separate nights um, for parents to come down and talk to us. We gave them a presentation. We asked any questions that they had. Um, what we've been doing is, as we mentioned, standards aren't telling us how to teach it. They're telling us what the expectations are. So our job is then to figure out how to best teach the students of North Branford. And that's what we've been doing. Um, we're about to post curriculum for numerous subjects through every building um, in different courses, letting parents know what our units are, what the expectations for each unit is, because they're nervous too. As you mentioned, this isn't the school that they went to. Parents don't know what's going on. So it's our job to make them feel comfortable, just as it is to prepare their students, and our job in administration to make sure our te teachers are ready as well. So I know this is an ongoing process and it's like never finished, but I mean, you, you mentioned swings, 2015, yeah. but right. when we get to 2015, what's the difference in the classroom from 2015 as opposed to 2006 or 2008? I would hope that you would see teachers more as facilitators now. Um, and I know I taught mathematics, and there's a big change in mathematics. Um, my students were very happy if I told them what to do 20 years ago when I started teaching. Just tell us what the formula is, Ms. Wooten, we'll do it. Um, now we want them to figure it out. We want them to come up with those formulas. And it's the same thing in language arts and in social studies and in science. We're asking students to not only be able to understand and relate what they know as we always have, but to explain to us how they got that or prove to us through citing evidence, being able to read things, and, and show what type of proof that an author has provided to substantiate a claim or an opinion. So it's more, it's, it's more work, but it's more invest. More individualized, yeah. problem solving, um, creative, and, and, and as I mentioned, higher order thinking skills where, where students are going out and they're researching, they're finding fact, they're finding evidence, they're supporting um, their thesis with you know, their work. We're, we're not asking them to regurgitate what we're saying to them in, in an 80 minute class period. Well, it makes a lot of so sense because it, when they get in the real world, it's, it's like nobody cares two plus two is four. No. They, they want right. to investigate and say, find it, you know, find the answer. Ma make make our, our business more efficient, make us more right. effective, help us to sell more, help us to do this in less amount of time. Right. You know, why is two plus two four? Because Mrs. Wooten taught me that when right, I was in high school, yeah. right. and, and she told me, "Well, figure it out." Because now I'm giving you six plus six, and she might not have given you that one in high right. school, so you're gonna have to uh, figure out why. It's exactly making connections. It's it's making connections so that it's it goes across all disciplines, and it's really about having students ask the right questions of us and of themselves. There, as we mentioned, there's you know the, the brochure that went out to all parents, but there's a couple of websites that are helpful as well, um, ConnecticutCoreStandards.org and SmarterBalanced.org, www. Um, I don't know if you can see this or not. Yeah, I, don't have, I don't have a screen in front of me. Can we get that on the screen? Um, I mean, can you, can you, if I read it to you, can you put it up on the screen? It, it's very professional here. That's the way we do things. <laughs> one, of the, one of them is www.ctcorestandards.org. And um, the other one is www.smarterbalanced.org. So those are a couple of sites that you, there's many that you can go and, and just have a, a quick hit with information, questions. Uh, for you, or you can call central office. You did not receive one of our brochures. We'll 
gladly send that out to you. And central office is 203-484-1440, right? You know that number. Unfortunately, <laughs> I know that one by heart. And I learned it after my kids left, so right. which made me feel better because I didn't have to keep calling central office when they were in the school. Um, what am I missing? On, well, on aside from the, the common core piece, obviously that's a, a big piece and, and, and on the teaching and learning, but there's a lot of great things happening in the schools. Uh, those parents that are actively involved and have been in for <coughs> uh, various fundraisers. We, we did the St. Baldrick's uh, fundraiser over at, at Jerome Harrison uh, about two weeks ago and raised over $30,000 for cancer research, and that was part of our Love for Lila. Uh, outreach. Uh, those types of things I think really speak volumes to the, the people of North Brantford, the fabric um, of the people that live and reside here and send their, their kids to our school system. And um, I have to say on all levels, kindergarten through 12, our administrators and our teachers embrace um, helping others and, and, and really um, embedding those characteristics in our students to make them better people, to be more caring and compassionate. So I could go on about other events, there, there's certainly um, many to name, but I'm really proud of, of how we've stepped up and, and helped others, not only on, on a global um, outreach, but right here in our town. Uh, they've really answered the call, and that's something we should be very proud of. Yeah, we, we have a lot of coming from the schools with, with help and stuff. I know that um, we were mentioning before the meeting, Babby Noon, who's a legend mm -hmm. in North Bradford schools, and I don't think she teaches anymore. Is she She's retired? coming back this Thursday. She's coming back again. <laughs> as a substitute. <laughs> She's taking a long-term substitute at the middle school. So we're shifting it up a little bit and, and putting her in with these 6th, 7th, and 8th graders. They're going to be so fortunate to have Ms. Noon as, a, as their gym teacher. Um, for till the end of the year. She's so like that movie. She just she's like the scene in The Godfather. Every right. time she's out, they she, pull her back she in. She comes back. But with, 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 her, with her sports teams, and, right. they, and they do it with the other sports teams. I know Webb does it with the cancer. The football uh, team does it with the football the, does it. With um, for Africa. But, but Babby Noon always has those kids doing three or four different things throughout the year right. for the community. It's certainly yeah. not about wins and losses with many of our coaches. They they really go above and beyond trying to instill sportsmanship and team play and, and, and helping the underdog. And they involve them off the playing field. The, the great coaches, and I, and I mean that we have great coaches, it, it's not from the start of the season to the end of the season. They're doing a lot of the hard work year-round, preparing them not only for their sport, but just forming relationships with them, staying in contact with them, making sure that they're you know, towing the line and doing well in school. And, and uh, I, I think, you know, you being a part of that staff, you really understand what I'm saying, that, you know, to do it the right way, it's a year-round commitment, and you make pennies per hour, if that. Yeah, we, we talk to the kids constantly and, right. on, you know, on the baseball, and I know all the other teams do that, too. Sure. But, you know, we even go, myself and the head coach, we go to a lot of the other activities, mm -hmm. the other sports activities, so we can see the kids, how you doing in school, how you right. doing here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, it, and it makes a difference. It means so much to the athletes when they look up and they see, you know, their baseball coach at a basketball game or a football game, you know, cheering for them. Um, they may not run up to you and jump up and down and say, thanks for being here, coach, but it's up there. They, well, some of them do. And some <laughs> of them do. And, you know, we're very fortunate that both our sports, sports teams and extracurricular activities, our drama club, our interact club, um, and and our student population in general. It's part of our mission to help our students give back to the community and become mm -hmm. productive citizens. So in doing that, I think it's part of the fabric of North Brantford that they realize that it's their responsibility to help others, um, especially those less fortunate. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a great thing to say. I mean, I went to the, um, the homecoming right. with the fireworks and yeah, the, that was and the parade and everything else. And it was like, and I don't think, I could be wrong, but I don't think that you guys spent like six months on that thing. No, it we, was, we put that together <laughs> quick. And that was another example of, you know, when, when there was help that was needed, people rallied and they came together. And to, to put that together and, and raise over $25,000 for a family with a, a daughter battling cancer, um, that, that's pretty powerful. And they do do that in this town. They fight they a lot. They certainly do. They fight a lot. but, but When uh, push comes to shove, yeah, they step up. They Absolutely. roll up their sleeves and they do what they have to do. And then they'll fight some more afterwards. But, you know, during doing it, they might even fight while doing it. But at least they'll, you know, they get the job done, which is nice to see. I mean, I went to a Catholic school, and we didn't do half of the things 
that I see being done at our high school. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and it's, it, it, you know, I look at it and say, the only thing we had one history teacher, which was the best thing I ever did, was he made us all um, sign up for an election. Okay. And, mm. and sign up as volunteers yeah, and then write cool. on it. That was part of That was the only thing that we did in the four years, and it's probably the only thing I remember, right. um, that we had to work on a campaign for like three months and yeah. write about it on a daily basis so we knew after we got out what the process was for, for that. And, and, and I see more of that going on in North Brantford schools right. than I did in the Catholic school that at the time I paid might have been a thousand dollars now right. it's about fourteen or fifteen thousand right. but uh, very progressive and and that forward thinking you know life authentic skills that are going to help yeah. help kid people so. develop and they're all about learning um, whether you're helping someone whether you're working in a classroom on an essay or you're working as a group to complete a project for science you know it's all about different skills that the students are going to need um, and the perspective that we want them to have that the world is a big place and there are lots of different things and we want to prepare them to go out into it and succeed so that's uh, that's about it we're, we're getting ready to wrap up but if you have questions on either the um, the core, core group uh, standards or anything else. Anything else. Scott's Absolutely. office is always open. Uh, Tracy's always there. It's 484-1440. Um, the core, core program, you can see the, um, the email addresses, the websites that we gave uh, a little earlier. And um, that hopefully that informed you on some things and, again, gave you some information as to how to get more information if, if we didn't give you enough in this in this hour show. So I, I thank both Scott and Tracy for coming on. I hope that our viewers learned something. And I'd like to thank our director, Michael Valente. And uh, until next time, be safe, be honest. <laughs>